Hi, my name is Tom Chick, and I may not know how to make board games. I leave that to the professionals. But by golly, I play enough of the things to know how not to make board games. And that's what I would like to talk to you about today in the context of this. Space Cadets Away Missions. Uh, quite the acronym. Uh, this is a game that came out a few years ago, and I don't. It's a sci-fi dungeon crawler, and I'm going to go ahead and spoil what we're talking about today and tell you that I really like it. Uh, but to explain the main reason I like it, we have to go back in time to 2005, a game I'm sure you'll you'll recognize. Uh, come with me, and and let's go to 2005, and I want to show you the dilemma of Jenny Barnes in Arkham Horror. Let's take a look. Jenny Barnes is here at Ma's Roadhouse. Uh, no, sorry, it's Hibbs Roadhouse. Ma's Boarding House. It's very embarrassing when you confuse the two. Uh, she, it's her turn to draw. It's like her encounter phase. So she has to draw a card. So she draws this card. Let's read it. Uh, here we go. It's something about, uh, oh, Ma's baking is so terrible. She's an awful cook. Ginny has to make a luck minus one check. Uh, otherwise, she loses sanity and vomits. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, all right, so let's then make her check. Her luck is five, but minus one means she only rolls four dice. As we know, a five or six is a hit. She has passed. Ginny Barnes does not vomit from eating Ma's terrible cooking. Now, I just want to explain something here. If we had rolled this, then that would have been just as much a success as only getting one six. No, whatever, there. Those are the same thing. Uh, all you need is one five or six. A five or six is a success, and you have passed. You do not vomit because of Ma's cooking. So Ginny is now going to go from Ma's boarding house into the south side street, but oh no, look, it's a dark young of Shubnigurov. So now she has to make a stealth check. So that's sneak. Uh, I think this minus two. I haven't played this in for so long. I think that's a penalty to your sneak check. So, oh, she only gets one die. Oh, she fails. So now she has to go to combat. So she rolls two dice to fight. Let's pretend her uh, fight is four to make this more dramatic. So she rolls four. Oh, first she has to make a sanity check. Man, I haven't played this in forever. Let's pretend she passes her sanity check. Now she has to make a fight check against a dark young of Shubnigurath. Oh, she got three hits, which is great because as we can see, its toughness is three. And if you got fewer than three hits, bupkis happens. So this is all very familiar, right? You uh, make a skill check. Whatever your skill is, that's the number of dice you roll. Fives and sixes are successes. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many you rolled. As long as you get at least one, you have passed your skill check. But now let's fast forward 15 years. Let me introduce you to First Officer Annie Fletcher from Space Cadets Away Missions. She's right here. She is what you call a rocketeer. Uh, Space Cadets Away Missions is a 50s themed science fiction setting. So the, the, the main characters, the heroes, they're called rocketeers. A rocketeer, as you might expect, lives on a rocket. Uh, the tiles that make up the map or the setting, the board in Space Cadets Away missions generally represent spaceships or moon bases or what have you. Uh, each hexagonal tile can have some borders that are solid, and those represent hatches. They can be closed or open. But at any rate, here's a rocket. Here's First Officer Annie Fletcher on her rocket. And oh no, here's a saucer man. Let's have Annie attack the saucer man. What might she use? She has an atomic rifle. And as you can see, an atomic rifle, when attacking the same hex, rolls two dice. An adjacent or a hex range two away rolls five dice. If this saucer man had been way out here and she'd had line of sight, she would have only gotten three dice. So let's roll and see if Annie hits. Five dice against the saucer man. No, yes, she did hit. And she's killed the saucer man. Annie wins the day. How terribly exciting. Let's look at another scenario. Let's say she rolled these dice. 
and she got that. Oh, yes, three hits. But guess what? The Saucer Man only has one hit point. She kills the Saucer Man and wins the day. Oh, even if she'd rolled this. I don't know if you can see where I'm going with this. That's the exact same result. Oh, she kills the Saucer Man and wins the day. But Space Cadets Away Missions was not made 15 years ago. It was made, uh, I think, two years ago. Uh, and in the intervening years, game designers have learned a lot about how to make games. Uh, so what I want to show you is how Space Cadets Away Missions takes this really hackneyed idea. Roll a d6. A five or six is a hit. The number that you roll is your skill. Maybe subtract one because it's a difficult skill check. Uh, Space Cadets Away Missions has taken this chestnut and uh, done something really cool with it. Let me show you. So let's reset here. Here's Annie Fletcher, first officer, firing the atomic rifle at a saucer man. Let's say she gets this roll. Now we're not counting these as hits. We are counting these as successes. And of these successes, only the first one is a hit. So Annie got one hit. She killed the saucer man. What are we to do with all these other dice? Well, let's make a slightly more complicated situation here. Let's put three saucer men here. These other dice are called overkills. Every success is a success. The first success is a hit. Every successive success, it's unnecessarily repetitive, every other success is an overkill. So what is an overkill? I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. Every combat interaction has three elements. The attacker, what she is attacking with, and what she is attacking. The attacker, the weapon, and the target. Each of these three elements has a separate overkill effect that can be triggered. In this case here, Annie has four overkills. So her hit will kill this saucer man, but now she's got four overkills to play with. One for base, one based on the, th the uh, saucer man. If I call these guys thralls, by the way, I'm gonna do that constantly. This is a thrall, this is a saucer man. Man, they look awfully similar to me. Uh, she's got four overkills to play with, one based on the saucer man. And if you look at a saucer man's card, he explained it, it will tell you exactly what that overkill ability is right down uh, right up here. Uh, the atomic rifle, as you may have seen, has an overkill ability. And if we look at Annie's sheet down here, she has an overkill ability. So in addition to killing this, which is all that would have happened in Arkham Horror, is this guy would be dead and it's now someone else's turn. But now Annie, the, the player playing Annie, has a lot of choices to make based on the overkill rolls. Annie's overkill ability is to move one space. So I just happen to know this, saucermen move one space and then they can attack with a range of one. Annie could use one of those overkills to move away one space so that next turn, these saucermen, we're gonna take off the one she killed, would move up one space and they couldn't reach her. She could also use these overkills to, let's pretend we have a larger rocket ship here. You know, if this looks like a penis, that's on you. Uh, here's a larger rocket ship. Uh, the overkill ability for the atomic rifle is called dislodge. It lets you move one alien, it's in line of sight, one tile. She could move one of these guys here. She has four overkills to play with. She could do that and that if she wanted to. Uh, the overkill ability for a saucer man is called psychic scream. Whenever a saucer man is killed, each overkill can be used to stun a saucer man anywhere on the map, by the way. You don't even need line of sight. Let's say that there was a saucer man way over here. So she kills one. She's got four overkills to play with. She stuns these three and this one. Because as we know, psychic screens have unlimited range and they can uh, go through solid walls. So right away, we now have a couple of things happening. First, as I mentioned, the person who rolls the dice it's more exciting when you get more successes. Uh, in Arkham Horror, you just need the one. In combat, you need a certain number based on a monster's toughness, yeah, big whoop. But here, every single roll, and this even applies to non-combat, by the way, if you see a bunch of those sixes and fives, that's a, a, a source of immediate delight because you have a lot of choices to make. Uh, each of those additional successes 
can be one of three things, and now you get to decide what they are, and that plays into these tactical puzzles that the game presents. But the second thing it does, and I think this is uh, arguably more important, one of the issues that Arkham Horror had, and still has, by the way, in its various incarnations, even the card game, Eldritch Horror, the third edition of Arkham Horror, um, I'm not sure that uh, there is enough of a difference expressed between, say, a Dark Young of Shubnigiroth, a Shoggoth, and a Migo. Uh, they tend to be bags of hit points. They tend to be sanity checks, uh, and that's it. Uh, I think a Night Gaunt carries you around. What does a Shoggoth even do? I couldn't tell you. So one of the things that Space Cadets Away Missions does is within the, the context of its kind of tongue-in-cheek 50s sci-fi uh, invasion theme is it gives its monsters, its aliens, a ton of personality. So you've met the saucer men. These are just the generic basic guys. There are also space leeches. There are space bugs. Actually, they're just called bugs. These are technically space leeches, regular bugs. There are leaders. These are the guys who rule the saucer men. There are thralls. And again, I'm constantly confusing thralls and saucer men. Uh, there are sentinels. Look at these big bruisers. And finally, there is a brain in a jar. How ghastly is that? These seven different aliens or monsters or creatures or enemies, each one has a different overkill effect. If Annie were in such a weird situation that she were using her, her atomic rifle here, she would choose a target and her choice might be based on any given target's overkill ability. Even something as simple, by the way, as this. You know, does she want to take advantage of the overkill of a bug or a brain in a jar? And a lot of times this will happen. You know, this will probably never happen, one of each of the seven aliens. I guess it could. But the point is, each one of these things is going to give her very different options. And Space Cadets Away Missions, these are all the, the monsters in the game, by the way, there's no additional ones. It takes advantage of this relatively small number of creatures to give each one a distinct gameplay mechanic. It furthermore takes advantage of these overkill abilities to give each of its six characters with his or her overkill ability a distinct gameplay uh, angle as well. And it's the same with the weapons. An atomic rifle is very different from a ray gun, which is very different from an arc knife. And by the way, monsters, when they attack you, they each get uh, unique overkill abilities based on their rolls. If a monster rolls six dice, which, by the way, is what this Sentinel does, his first hit will do damage to you. You're only taking one point of damage. But those other five dice, if they get successes, they're going to fire off the Thrall's overkill ability. Furthermore, each of the seven monsters in Space Cadets Away missions has a unique overkill ability when it attacks you. And there's one more really cool thing that Space Cadets Away missions does uh, that I'm going to show you now. With a d6, pretty straightforward math. You roll three dice, one of them is gonna be a success. Because you've got all these extra options with the overkill abilities, I think Space Cadets Away Missions feels a little bad about giving you such high odds of success. So it removes these six-sided dice, and it brings in these lovely, colorful 10-sided dice. And only a number between one and three, a zero is a 10, by the way, uh, is a success. So what that means is if you roll three dice, well, if you roll any one die, your odds of success are not 33.3%, they are 30%. So it might seem minor, but in the end, it does matter. Space Cadets Away Missions makes up for all these awesome overkill options by taking away 3.3% chance of success when you roll a die. And so how all this fits into the context of how not to make a board game is that Space Cadets Away Missions, it takes that convention that was probably around long before even Arkham Horror, uh, where you roll a die and a higher range represents a success and a greater chance of success is represented by adding additional dice. We've been doing that for 15 years. Uh, but Space Cadets Away Missions knows better than to just keep doing it. 
That's how you don't make a board game, is do something the same way it's been done all along. You make a board game by taking some gameplay mechanic like that and tweaking it to give your game something new, something better, something distinct, to give the seven monsters in your game unique AI behaviors give the player multiple choices during a tactical uh, battle to make battle more of a puzzle about difficult decisions. Uh, so that's what you do with tradition, is you don't stick to it, you adapt it. Uh, you make it better. Uh, it evolves. So how you don't make a board game is just do Arkham Horror. How you do make a board game, uh, Space Cadets Away Missions. So uh, let's go play. Let's uh, l do a playthrough. I'm going to play one of the early scenarios. Uh, stay tuned and you can see all this stuff in action.